Global warming isn't a hoax, as some might claim. Scientific evidence, statistics and real-life experience attest to its reality. The lack of knowledge, the greed of the energy industry and leaders lacking vision and responsibility have led to the widespread use of fossil fuels, resulting in pollution and the greenhouse effect. Global warming is a major contributor to rising temperatures and unpredictable weather patterns. Bangladesh is one of the first countries to bear the brunt of the disasters resulting from climate change. Here is one of the largest slums in Dakar, chaotic and congested similar to slums found in other major cities. What sets this slum apart, though, is it has become semi-permanent home to hundreds of thousands of refugees. These refugees are not, however, people displaced by war or political strife. They're victims of the direct consequences of climate change. There's a term for these displaced people, climate change refugees a term which was coined relatively recently as the impacts of global warming intensify. Mohammed Noshu was among the first to arrive here. He used to be a farmer in the coastal villages on the Bay of Bengal. So his house is flooded three times, that's what you said. Where did he live before? Noshu fled from his flooded home in Bola, a district in southern central Bangladesh, which includes the largest island in Bangladesh, Bola Island. He says he had no land left to live on and had lost everything. Yes, you can call it. He's not alone. Around 100,000 people live in this slum, the majority of whom have also been affected by floods. The topography of Bangladesh is predominantly lowland. Its location leaves it vulnerable to the influence of tropical cyclones in the Indian Ocean. It's no surprise, then, that the country has some of the heaviest rainfall in the world. Excessive rainfall can bring fertility to soil, but can also lead to devastating floods. People living in the area face floods regularly. What's abnormal, though, are the rapid and drastic changes in the climate. The heavy rainfall is more intense and prolonged than ever before. Nongshu said that he lost his home to the floods. Despite rebuilding his house on another piece of land, it was once again swept away by the swollen river. Faced with limited job prospects in the village and the responsibility of caring for his child, he decided to work as a tricycle driver in Dakar. He managed to rent a small makeshift shelter. The owner of the property, however, evicted him. That's when Nongshu came to this community and he's lived here since that day. The rapid melting of ice at the Earth's poles has led to a swift rise in sea levels. The changes in wind patterns result in abnormally heavy rainfall and disrupt seasons. Cyclones are becoming more frequent and intensifying in power. In 2017, Cyclone Mora hit the southeastern coast of Bangladesh, with wind speeds reaching 150 kilometers per hour. Heavy rain blanketed a wide area, and over a million people living on the Bay of Bengal coast had to relocate. The impact of this cyclone was far and wide, affecting several countries. Sri Lanka bore the brunt of the devastation, experiencing severe flooding and landslides. The cyclone claimed the lives of over 200 people, with hundreds more reported missing. Global warming is taking a toll on tens of millions of people, taking away their homes and sources of sustenance. As their homes and means of sustenance were swept away, people had no choice but to evacuate to the capital, becoming climate change refugees. 
Saleha Begum, also a climate change refugee, said that she lost her home in a massive flood in 1998. Her house was swept away, forcing her to live by the roadside without enough food. Many lives were lost. With no assistance in sight, Saleha also decided to relocate to Dhaka. Having spent their adult lives working on farms, when they migrated to the city, they had to adapt. Noshu used a small shack in the slum to open a tea shop, offering a popular beverage among the Bangladeshi people. According to Noshu, the reason the land here was affordable was because it had been affected by flooding before. He tried to save 60 Bangladeshi taka, or about 55 US cents, per month. And, after accumulating 12,000 taka, or about 110 US dollars, he purchased the land to build his home. Due to the low price of the land, others affected by the floods also chose to settle here. <laughs> Saleha, meanwhile, came to Dakar with someone from her old village. Initially, she had work as a housemaid, but the homeowner was often violent towards the domestic staff, prompting her to move to this slum. The influx of climate change refugees is placing a heavy burden on the city. Like many other cities in this impoverished country, Dakar, the capital, lacks efficient urban planning. It could be described as the capital of chaos, with a population of around 23 million in this one city in 2023. Here, congested doesn't even begin to describe conditions with every square inch filled with people. Dakar bustles with cars and people. On narrow roads with no clear lines and intersections lacking traffic lights, residents of Dakar drive aggressively. Everyone attempts to move forward as much as possible, and there's a constant cacophony of loud bells and car horns. This chaos vividly reflects the absence of proper, or in fact any, urban planning and basic infrastructure. Cities like this are vulnerable to more frequent and severe natural disasters. It is a city on the brink. Climate change causes a significant number of fatalities worldwide. Information from the climate change consultancy group DARA indicates that over 5 million people lost their lives in 2010. Climate change contributes to the spread of diseases and causes extremes of heat, cold, and hunger. The number of fatalities attributed to climate change increases annually, with the majority occurring in the world's 10 most impoverished countries, including Bangladesh. This land has 230 rivers, so it's little wonder that Bangladesh faces recurring and devastating floods. Water transportation is a vital aspect of life here, with people accustomed to living with floods especially those on the Bay of Bengal coast. Floods that devour land and homes permanently, however, is a relatively new phenomenon. Embarking on a journey to the source of the refugees from climate change, we leave the slums of Dakar heading towards the Bay of Bengal by passenger ship. After a night afloat, we finally arrived at Jibontari Floating Hospital near the Bay of Bengal, the incubator of cyclones. This floating hospital shows how people on the Bay of Bengal are adapting to areas that are gradually sinking under rising seawater levels. The main rivers of Bangladesh, the Padma and the Jamuna, confluence with the Meghna River before flowing into the Bay of Bengal here. This area is part of the fertile Ganges Delta, considered the largest delta in the world, extending into India and Myanmar. Known as the Green Delta, it boasts lush greenery nourished by water and minerals carried by the river. 
The vast land is now being inundated, leading to the permanent submergence of some areas. This phenomenon creates islands, where people become isolated from the outside world. Those who choose not to move to the capital must adapt to survive. Schools that were once on land are now floating schools, and hospitals have become floating medical facilities. So I saw the bed, so the patient, if, the, if they need to stay in the hospital, they can, right? Yeah, when they take the admission, right. so we keep them. Okay. Yeah. And one by one go to the operation theater. Okay. After finishing operation, they come back here. How many patients you can accommodate here, sir? Uh, well, that is only 12 beds. 12? Yeah. And if patients see more, we arrange bed for the, for the floor because accommodation are not. A 20 bed hospital with three doctors on rotation provides medical care to those cut off from land or who are in other isolated locations. The man who used this floating hospital told us that he travelled here for three hours on a motorcycle from his distant home. If he'd taken the bus, it would have taken around five hours because he would need to cross rivers twice by ferry. Welcomed with smiles by nurses, we were encouraged to explore the floating hospital. Although it's not a large vessel, the facility boasts everything a standard hospital should have, from a screening room to an operating theater. This is look like in the big hospital. Yeah. <laughs> it is the same as in the big hospital. I mean, wow. We won't be able to know that we are in the floating boat. Yeah. Right? They say there is two beds. They say one microscope. So one patient is ready here. Okay. Yeah, another patient is ready here. Ah. So the patient sit here and operate. Right. After completion operated, no killing of time, sit here. Ah. So because of so many patients, you have to work fast. Yeah, yeah. But when is raining, windy, cyclone hitting, is that affecting the open? Not, not, not right. So. Okay. Maybe we say if the wind is hard, only that is a little ah, <laughs> distance okay. feels well. It's not really affecting. It's a very big, weighty boat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in a small wave, it will not disturb. Okay, so the boat is designed in a way that can resist yeah. the wind and the rain, right? Even in the medical college, when we phone for a doctor to give recruitment, so they first say, we don't know the swimming. We don't want to swim. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't come? Don't come. Uh -huh. But when you convince some doctor to come, yeah. They're happy with it. Yeah, they fussy. <laughs> then come. Hmm. If you want to see more great content from all over the world, please like the video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon. Thank you. Today, a bright blue floating hospital was moored along the riverbank with swift currents flowing past. The water level is higher and the current stronger than the small local boats can handle. For people in this area, the floating hospital is an absolute necessity and lifesaver. The patient told us that he fully appreciates this hospital. Without it, he would have to pay considerably more in travel and surgery costs. He mentioned that the hospital provides affordable and quality care, and he's thankful for such a facility. Another patient emphasized the importance of the hospital for the local people, as it offers affordable and quality health care. He thought that if this hospital were to move elsewhere, he and the villagers would miss it. He hopes that there will be more of its kind, providing treatment for local children. A nurse informed us that there are usually a lot of patients. Today, however, heavy rain since this morning means the hospital is quieter than usual. 
In addition to the floating hospital, the people here also have floating schools and practice floating agriculture. They continually adapt to the changing weather conditions. For eight months of the year, this area near the Bay of Bengal is submerged due to the monsoon. That's why it's been raining heavily throughout our time here. On both sides of the path we walked, there were puddles everywhere. A haystack stands in the rain in front of a house, showing that the resident might be a farmer. This prompts contemplation about whether the rice crop will succumb to the flooding. Then we pass a two-story concrete school building in the rain. The schoolyard is flooded and students wade through the water carrying umbrellas to attend class. Further on, children play joyfully in the rain. They're too young to worry about what might happen to their homes and health. What is climate change? Is it real? People who live here are not familiar with the term climate change or the various related terms invented to describe its impacts. Some say they've heard the terms but don't understand their meanings, while others have never even heard phrases like global warming, greenhouse effect or any of the terms related to this issue. Climate change is a global catastrophe affecting all life on Earth. Rising temperatures make the oceans warmer. Their levels are also rising, encroaching onto land and posing a threat to those living along the coasts. The rapidly rising and warming oceans contribute to an increased frequency of storms, including cyclones, typhoons and hurricanes. Noshu believes that only God knows why Bangladesh has to face this type of weather, and only God knows why they have to endure such suffering. He explains that when they came here, no one helped them, and they had to work extremely hard. They're unfamiliar with the science behind global warming and its effects. They only know that in recent years, the rains have been heavier, storms more frequent, and water levels are consistently rising to take their land. Whoever your god may be, he or she has very little to do with the changes that are drastically impacting these lives on the coast. Every degree of global warming is entirely the result of human activity.